Hey, it's me, Steve. It is October 19, 2017. Time is 7.43. It is 50 degrees out, and it is geo-rant time. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's not going to be a rant today so much as it's going to be a show-and-tell day. I'm going to show you one of my coolest pieces, at least in my opinion, that I have. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. In the Thunder Bay area in 2012, they were uh, widening TransCanada 17, and we were up there for the ILSG meeting. I believe it was 2012. And, um, well, a friend of mine went down into the ravine and found something. Uh, most people around the Lake Superior area are familiar with Lake Superior agates. And they are prized little... Uh, gemstones and they're very beautiful and they're tumbled up and Sarah's working on some of those getting some of those but there are several source areas for them and or source rocks for them and I'm going to show you one right here in a second but first I need to talk about it um, the uh, area in which we were uh, the, it's meta sedimentary rocks they're, they haven't been metamorphosed too bad um, they, they, they extend down into the upper peninsula, but this formation doesn't that we know of, and it's called the gunflint. It's an iron carbonate, and it's even exposed at a rest area really well along TransCanada 17 on your way to Thunder Bay, but it's, uh, where it's usually exposed, there's not a lot of iron in it. It's more just a dolo stone, a salacious dolo stone, uh, but this is carbonate, but here it is, right here. That's the gunflint, all right? That's the host rock. But look what you have here. This is what we call seam agate. This is one of the sources for Lake Superior agate right here. It's the gunflint formation. And this would be the top of the bed right here. And this probably formed um, as a result of a disconformity. The rock was probably exposed subairily for a while. and started to chemically dissolve allowing silicates to later fill it but that's it and I just the gunflint if memory serves is about 1.85 actually it is around 1.85 billion years old I believe because the Sudbury impact ejecta I believe cuts through it um, but um, so it's a little younger than the Michigami in the upper peninsula which is extensively exposed from uh, the Bishop Barriga Shrine, not in the cliffs there, that's Jacobsville, that's still Precambrian, but it's a lot younger. But if you go down to the lake level, you'll see these green and red shales, and if you follow the Keweenaw Bay on the east side, you'll see them there as well at the contact with the Jacobsville. That's the Michigami Slate. That remains unchanged pretty much up until it reaches the Thunder Bay area, but as you leave uh, the Bishop Barriga Shrine, which is in Lentz, and as you go south, the Michigami becomes black, and it becomes a gray wacky interbedded with the uh, slate until its southernmost exposure along US 41 terminates at the Iron County line in the Upper Peninsula. But uh, anyway, that's it, and I'm going to show you this off, show this off to you one more time, and uh, and I hope you learned something. <laughs>